I take a lot of notes. This first column in OneNote represents all the different sections that I have. And then within each section, you'll see all the notes in the second column. And this is just one notebook of many. And I don't even have all of them open right here to show you those. I've been using OneNote for more than a decade now. And in that time, I've accumulated more than a thousand notes. I also feel like my note taking needs have evolved and that OneNote hasn't kept up. My main two reasons for switching are a lack of features and then some usability issues that I've encountered. And even across those two categories, there's really only a handful of problems, but they've become prominent enough and frequent enough that I'm sick of it. I just want to switch. If OneNote is working for you, then by all means continue to use it. I think it does a lot of things well. The last thing I want to say before we start this video is that I'm not going to be covering what I'm switching to, which at the moment is Obsidian. I want to wait until I've had more of an opportunity to use it before making a video on that. Let's start with missing features. There are two main features that I'd like to have built into OneNote, and the first is an outline or a table of contents. So we're looking at a note right now, and the contents aren't important. You don't need to read this note at all. But this is a note that is over 7,000 words long, and I wrote this more than five years ago. So maybe I'm trying to find what was important to me back then, and the only way to find these headers is to just scroll down and look for the blue text that I see. Meanwhile, if you look at a program like Google Docs, if I were to just paste in those same contents, we just have a blank document right now, and I just press paste on my keyboard, we can see that it automatically added an outline at the side. And if I click one of these things, it goes immediately to that header. This forms our table of contents. And if we wanted something directly in the document, we could click insert and go down to table of contents, and we'd have something here that we could keep updated. If this were built into OneNote, it would be great for navigating longer notes that I have. The next feature that I've wanted is proper code blocks. So here we have an example note with some Python code. And in one note, I want to turn it into code. So let's see what that does. We go over to styles and we go down to code. And literally all that happened is we changed the font to a monospace font. In fact, I could have accomplished the same thing by just selecting this and typing out console And that's as though we had just clicked the code style down here. This is not a proper code block in my mind. If we look at Obsidian, we can see what a proper code block is. First of all, there is a clear delineation here in the form of this rectangle that this is a code block. So if you're scrolling through a large note, you can find the next code snippet you have pretty easily. In addition, we have proper syntax highlighting. So a comment looks different from a variable, which looks different from a function call. And then finally, as a nice little added feature, if we hover over this button at the upper right, it says copy, we could copy the entire text of this with just a button click. So if we go back to OneNote, we can actually paste in formatted text already from another program. So here we do get syntax highlighting, or so it seems. But the real problem is that if we want to add on to this, suppose we want to type another message, we don't have that syntax highlighting. What was really happening here is that it's just coloring individual words and characters. So we need to apply that same formatting to anything new that we do, or we need to go back to our external program, type the new text, copy it back over to OneNote and paste it in. And all that's very unwieldy. Those are the major features that I would use all the time. But there are some smaller features which would be nice to have, but it's not really breaking my experience by not having them in OneNote. One is a command palette, which is just a modern thing I expect for most editors now, where you can open the palette and find a command that you otherwise couldn't find through the menu or a button. And so let's say I want to export to a PDF, I just type PDF, and there's the thing that I want to use. And I can use that to show off the second thing, callouts here. So I'll insert a callout, and then I'll type the text that I have. And just like with code blocks, it got clearly separated from the rest of the note, and it even got a little nice icon here. Also, I mentioned at the beginning of this section that I want these features to be built in. I recognize that there might be add-ons that provide this, but I use OneNote from a bunch of different platforms, so I need those add-ons to be everywhere. Plus, I was looking into this as I was making this video, and I found this official page, onenote.com apps. But look at some of these links here. If I open up these three, for example, this site can't be reached, page not found, oops, how embarrassing. Would this give you confidence that what you're about to download is going to work? Would you trust those plugins? This is why I think this functionality should just be built into OneNote. On to usability issues. As I mentioned, I use OneNote from several platforms, and each of those platforms had their own usability issues. It's not like any of them were earth shattering bugs, but there's a reason why we have the expression death by a thousand cuts. Each of those paper cuts added to the annoyance I had using OneNote. I wanna highlight three of the most frustrating issues I had. The first is find on Android. I have my phone hooked up to my computer right now. So as I scroll on my computer, you can see it updating on my phone. But rather than try to point a camera at my phone, I'm just going to show you on the computer. So if I click the three dots at the upper right here and click find, let's say I'm searching for a chocolate chip cookie recipe. So I type cookie and it highlights the word cookie everywhere, but there's no way to find next here. 
So I can't press the search button again and have it find the next instance of this. It just always finds the first instance and I would have to scroll through my entire list of recipes to find the specific one that I want. I don't understand why what I consider very basic functionality isn't there, but this is one of the biggest usability issues I have on Android. The next issue is just general keyboard usability on Mac OS, but I'm gonna highlight one specific problem here, which is this that I'm going to do. So I have a fake note with just a lot of the same line, and I'm gonna type Command F, if you're on Windows, it'd be Control F, and that puts my focus up in the search box, and I can type the word demo, and I can find all the instances of the word demo. And unlike on Android, I can actually go to the next or the previous instances here. So that's great. This is all working as expected so far. So now I found the instance that I wanted to, and I write some text here. Now I want to press Command F and search for the word problem. So I do that. I do Command F and type problem. And you can see here, it just did something very unexpected. It found the next instance of the word demo and replaced it with problem. So for whatever reason, pressing Command F another time just repeats that one search. It doesn't go to the next instance, that's Command G, but it repeats the same search unless the notebooks view has the focus, in which case you can search for the thing you actually wanted to search for up in the search bar again. So I find this very unintuitive and it's caused me to overwrite sections of my notes that I didn't mean to because I didn't realize where the focus was until it was too late. The final usability issue is that OneNote doesn't support double clicking and dragging. So let's cover what this is first of all. If I single click somewhere and then drag the cursor, I'm selecting text. This is not revolutionary. You've done this probably since the first day you used a computer. What you might not know is that if you double click a word and then drag, you can only select by word boundary. So for example, there's no way for me to select just the C in cursor right now because I double clicked to start this drag. Almost every program involving text on practically every operating system works this way. And for whatever reason, OneNote does not. So I find myself in this situation a lot where I want to highlight some text and I want to make it bold, but I don't want to have to highlight exactly where the word boundaries are. That's what double clicking and dragging does. So instead I double click and just, just nothing happens. I can only single click to select and then drag from there. Let's talk about migrating to another program. If you only have a few notes in any program and you want to migrate to any other program, you could just do it by hand. But if you have more than a thousand notes and there are images and complex formatting and links between those notes, then it becomes a very involved task. I don't want to talk about exactly the process of migrating this. It was technical and it took many hours over many days. The point is that you don't want to be migrating that often. And when you do, you want it to be painless. That meant for me that I wanted to switch to using Markdown notes. For those who don't know, Markdown is a way of putting your formatting directly into the text itself. So right now we're looking at OneNote and I have this code block from earlier. If I wanted to change this so that it's no longer a code block, there's nothing I can type that will let me do that. I need to go into this top section here and change something. Maybe I want to unbold it or maybe I want to change the font. In Markdown, the way you would do this is that what made it a code block is actually there in the text. It's these three back ticks. So if I delete these, then we see it's no longer a code block. And actually this text got very large. The reason for that is because the pound sign is now interpreted as the character that makes this into a header. So I can just delete that too. And now we have our plain text just like we had before. By having my notes in Markdown, it should make it much easier for me to switch to any other Markdown supporting program, or at least run some automatic conversion tools to make it easier, like I mentioned. A lot of these issues that I talked about aren't new in OneNote. But when OneNote first came out and for many years afterward, I feel like the good outweighed the bad. But I haven't seen those things get fixed and I don't really have confidence that they will. If you look at things from Microsoft's perspective, OneNote, as far as I understand, has no method of monetization. The app is free for personal use and for business. There are no ads in it. And the only way you could sort of argue that it's getting monetized is by saving to OneDrive. But OneDrive offers so much storage for free that I would need to take notes at the same rate for more than the rest of my life to probably be able to fill the free tier of OneDrive. So essentially it's an unmonetized app. And when you have a proprietary app that has no monetization route, I'm not usually confident that they're going to get the changes that I would wanna see because there isn't the incentive for the company to do that. There used to be a OneNote user voice, which was a site where you could upvote issues and my issues were on there. It's not like I added them, they were added by other members of the community. And so Microsoft probably knew about them and if they've known about them for that long, then they're just not getting prioritized for fixes. And that's fine. Again, OneNote still does some good stuff and if you're happy with it, then you should continue to use it. But more recently, Microsoft announced Loop and it's not a one-to-one -one replacement of OneNote, but I think it's close enough, they're similar enough where it's going to be prioritized moving forward. And if you look at Loop, it has 
personal and business plans. It's part of Microsoft 365, as far as I understand. So there are yearly subscriptions that you can use and that's how they make their money. That means that they're much more incentivized to fix any bugs or usability issues there that they might encounter. So I've essentially lost confidence in OneNote. This sums up why I stopped using it. I don't think my issues are gonna get fixed and other programs are more usable and have more features. So that's why I switched. That's it. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it.